unsightly algae growth, inactive shrimp, bacterial issues? Maybe you just have no idea. Have no fear, Bob Moss is here with the solution to every aquarium problem ever, hydrogen peroxide. Welcome back to the channel everyone, I'm Bob Moss. If you're new here, you should definitely subscribe, it's free! Now, hydrogen peroxide or H2O2 is not a cure for everything like I said, that was kind of hyperbolic, but it is a must have for your aquarium, in my opinion, and that's the only opinion that matters. In summary, it helps keep the water clean, kills bad bacteria, and oxygenates the water, which helps keep things active and happy and healthy. I'll get into the hows and whys and whats and whens and all that stuff in a minute here. At bobmoss.shop I guarantee the best selection and lowest prices of everything I could actually get through customs. Use the link in the description and be sure to enter the code YouTube15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order. So if you're going to use hydrogen peroxide in your aquariums, I'm just going to start off here quickly so that you know, so it's not buried in the video, how much to use and when to use it. Oh, and how to use it, I guess. Pretty simple there. There are three dosing levels that I like to use. There's one milliliter per 10 gallons, three milliliters per 10 gallons, and up to four milliliters per 10 gallons if you have a really bad problem. You don't really want to go higher than the four milliliters uh, just because it might start affecting the big bigger things in your tank like your shrimp and fish. How you're going to use it, you're going to take your pipette and just put it into your, your hydrogen peroxide. I mean, it's pretty, pretty simple. The pipette is very, very important. I just use a three milliliter pipette and then that allows me to use uh, to, to get different dosing amounts. There are two ways to dose it. You can just put it in the tank like I normally do because I'm lazy, or you can pre-mix it with tank water and then pour it in the tank after. Regardless of how you add it, it's important to turn the light off and turn your filters off for at least an hour after dosing. The hydrogen peroxide does break down with light, so in order for it to kind of do its thing fully, you just want to turn the light off, and then you want to turn the filter off so that it doesn't get in the filter and kill all that bacteria you want it to kill the bad stuff in the water not in your filter that said at the one milliliter per 10 gallon dosing you don't really have to turn off your filter it's low enough it's not really gonna harm anything that's more of a preventative dose we'll get into that so when to use hydrogen peroxide or h2o2 in your aquarium the first and obvious one is when problems arise if you have algae uh, build up really bad algae hair algae especially it's really good for treating that you can spot treat stuff like we'll, we'll get into the specifics of the algae if you notice you're having like shrimp deaths or inactive shrimp you can use that as a kind of a preventative measure as a catch-all if you're not sure what's killing your stuff it's just it's just a great solution if you have some problems in your tank and you're not a hundred percent sure hydrogen peroxide is really never gonna hurt and then as i mentioned there's regular dosing just putting it in like once or twice a week you can also use the little oxygenator thingies that some people use in their tanks to keep a constant dosing in there and that's just going to help keep the water clean and add oxygen back into the water help oxygenate the water as they say okay so the problems that will arise that you're going to use h2o2 to treat number one is algae or algae however you want it algae that damn Damn it, Al. So as I mentioned, it's great for spot treating. For this, you're just going to get the dose, one or two milliliters really, into your pipette. You're going to put it in the tank where there's algae and squirt, squirt onto the algae. And within a couple doses, it's gonna take a couple doses. You'll notice the green start to turn white. That's the hair algae dying. I don't actually have any hair algae in my tank, so if I have B-roll, it's from someone else. It's a great thing to dose before you start big algae removals, like if you have to do a blackout of your tank. If you do the H2O2 dosing and then the blackout, it's gonna help that little bit more, and then when you go in to clean out whatever algae's left, there'll be much less if any and through regular dosing it's a great preventative measure i never have hair algae in my tanks the only algae i really have is this hard green stuff that grows on the glass if i did more regular h2o2 dosing i could even prevent that but i kind of like it so i i tend to stick to one milliliter per 10 gallons a week maybe every two weeks or so just to just to spice things up issue number two you can use hydrogen peroxide to help treat is bacterial Ooh. issues how you're going to notice this with shrimp there is red rust disease or even just shrimp deaths and you're not 
sure what happened. Same with fish. If, if there's fish deaths and you're not sure what happened, it could be bacterial issues. There are other things with fish, like uh, different, lots of different diseases. Like it's not going to treat uh, the, the swim bladder diseases or uh, dropsy stuff like that, but it could help with like fin rot and things that are on the outside of the fish that are more bacterial. Also, if you have really bad mom buildup and you think that that might be adding bad bacteria in the into the tank, I, I had that issue for a little bit in this tank. There was way too much mom and I, I was feeding it was like this this negative feedback cycle of bad bacteria and shrimp deaths and etc etc and h regular h2o2 dosing on top of cleaning a little bit did help that a lot and then if you have improper filtration so it's not agitating the water enough or like the filters clogged the h2o2 dosing will just help with adding the oxygen back in the water and you know things like goldfish will really appreciate extra oxygen in the water you lucky son of a bitch. Problem number three is inactive shrimpies. So if your shrimp are just kind of chilling and not doing much, uh, there might be some issues in the tank as you could suspect. And dosing hydrogen peroxide, once again, helps add that oxygen into the water and which helps get them more active and swimming around. Generally, if, if that's the issue, you will notice more activity in your shrimp within a day of, of dosing the hydrogen peroxide. It will be noticeable. Once again, it helps keep that water clean, which is very important for your shrimp health and it kills bad bacteria that might be killing off your little shrimp guys. Those things are like ticking time bags. Problem number four is if you have no idea what the issue is. As I mentioned, hydrogen peroxide won't hurt. Wow. You know, it's cheap. It's an easy start when you have no idea where to start. You can start with hydrogen peroxide and then go from there because it's only really going to help. And as I mentioned, it's not going to cure everything, but it, it can help give you maybe more time to diagnose the problem if you have some fish diseases. With with shrimp, the hydrogen peroxide, I feel it literally is a cure-all in shrimp tanks. You can quote me on that, but with fish, they are a little bit more complicated with the diseases. I guess the only thing the hydrogen peroxide isn't going to kill in the shrimp tank is the gross green fungus, the Eleodopsidae, but even then, if you isolate the shrimp and treat with hydrogen peroxide you might save it it's been it's been done not by me so in summary as you can see i always have a bottle around if not two or three just in case i end up using a bit much because there were some issues as i mentioned it's generally really really cheap don't get gammed by expensive peroxide shop around make sure you get cheap stuff i think you can get it in canada at least for like two or three bucks a bottle at like the most don't pay more than that with the thing that happened it definitely went up for some reason but the prices have kind of leveled out although now there's supply chain issues and inflation so that kind of sucks <laughs> because i always have it on hand i do dose regularly in all my breeding well yeah, all, all my breeding tanks, I should say. This one doesn't have much in it right now, so it doesn't get dosed. Because, yeah, it's a great preventative tool that you should have on hand for your aquarium, just in case. I'm not superstitious, but I'm, I am a little stitious. So that's all. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already. Hit the bell. Leave a comment below uh, what you think, if you have any questions about H2O2. What I should talk about next, you know, I... Uh, I'm running out of idea, not really. Oh yeah, hit the like button, but very gently. You don't want to break it for the next person. Huge, huge shout out to my YouTube channel members. Robert Redman, Mitch Bottoma, Jamie A, 3DRC, Jake FWTX, Daniel Cordon, Amanda Curry, Gone Shrimp and Lucas Talbot, Aaron's Water Buddies, BJ Palmer, Roman Pitroff, and Welcome Back Tater Salad. If you'd like a shout out, early access, uh, member only content, links in the description. I also have Facebook, Discord, Twitch, uh, some other stuff down there. Check that out. My hobby shop that's huge and remember until next time keep your shrimp hand strong bye bye now